and travel the long road to justice together. What you know, alibiers. Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. Good to have you here on this Tuesday. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are. It's almost 70 degrees here. I'm fortunate after this. I'll be putting out some more wiretaps from the Adelson case later today. But we're going to go through Kayla Montgomery's testimony today. Before we get started, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like the video. Share it with your friends. If you want updates when I post new content, hit the bell. It'll let you know there's something fresh waiting for you. Music fact of the day. The song Purple Haze. Jimi Hendrix gave a couple of meanings for that song over the years. One of those was based on an experience he had in New York in which a woman he liked he said, put a voodoo spell on him. Love me some Hendrix. So day two of testimony was Kayla Montgomery on the stand the entire day. That day ended a little early. She had a migraine. So they picked up with it yesterday and she's done testifying. Starts off with the prosecution asking why she's in prison. And she says perjury. She lied to the grand jury about this case. She said she lied to the police and the grand jury because she was scared for herself and her kids. She didn't want anyone to get in trouble, and she was told by Adam to stick to the story that Harmony was dropped off at her mother's. The prosecution asked about Harmony, and Kayla starts to tear up. And she said about a year after they were together, Adam was working on getting custody of Harmony. And she said he had to work to get custody of her. It took four years in total. And she said they visited Harmony each week for a couple of hours leading up to that. They show her a selfie of her in Harmony that was taken on July 7th, 2019, just a couple of days before Harmony was struck in the face by her dad. She said that they were laughing, playing, taking pictures. She said they always did silly pictures together. They officially got custody of Harmony in February of 2019. They were living on Guilford Street, which you guys know is the home they were evicted out of. She said before Harmony got there, they decorated her room because Harmony loved Minnie Mouse. So they got wall decals. They bought furniture, sheets, everything she would need. She said that Harmony was potty trained when they got custody of her, and she never had accidents. She was working at a Dunkin' Donuts in July of 2019, but she was fired for stealing money from the register. She admitted to it and wrote a letter acknowledging that she had taken the money. When Adam's uncle Kevin left to go to Florida, Kayla was still working there. Her normal shift was 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., and while she was working, Adam would watch the three kids. Around that time, she said their youngest son, Declan, was about six months old. When she got home from work, she would help with the kids, play with them. They would watch movies, get ready for bed, cook. She overheard the argument between Kevin and Adam, Kevin being Adam's uncle, about Harmony's black eye. She said Kevin was mad. He and Adam were yelling back and forth. She did see that black eye when she got home from work. The injury was on the right side of her face. Just a trigger warning here because we are going to get into some of the more unpleasant details of what happened to Harmony. I'm not going too thick in the weeds with this. As always, I will link that day's testimony in the description if you want to go watch. She overheard an argument between Kevin, who is Adam's uncle, and Adam about Harmony's black eye. She said Kevin was very, very mad. They were yelling back and forth. Kayla also saw that black eye when she got home from work. She said it was to one side of her face. It was very red, and the next day it turned black and blue. She asked Adam what happened. His story to her was that their son, Seamus, was playing with a lightsaber and hit her on accident. He ended up telling her the story about him hitting her because, according to Adam, Harmony was covering the baby's mouth because he was crying. They asked Kayla about Demetrius, who was the child protective services worker who came to the house. She knew why he was there. They got a call about the kids not being taken care of. And also, there were allegations that Adam was abusing Harmony. When child protective services got there, Adam grabbed Harmony and left with her. She said she talked to Demetrius and covered for Adam. She didn't want Adam to get in trouble. They were officially evicted on November 27th, 2019. That would have been the day before Thanksgiving. We know they went to living in the car. It was Adam, Harmony, Kayla, and their two boys. Their friend Anthony asked them not to stay in that parking lot of the Colonial Apartments, but they did. Adam slept in the driver's seat. Kayla slept in the passenger seat. Harmony was behind her in the back seat. 
The baby was in the middle, and the older child of Adam and Kayla's was behind the driver's seat. She said Harmony didn't start to have accidents until after the eviction. She wouldn't tell them that she had to go to the bathroom, and then she would just go in the seat. One thing I'm thinking about here is you have this severe disruption to this child's life. She's gone from living in a house to living in a car 24-7. And who knows what responses she did get if she asked to go to the bathroom. I'm sure it was probably an inconvenience if she did ask to go. This poor kid couldn't win, y'all. She said that she would just go in the seat and it was happening a lot and it increased in frequency. She said Adam would get very angry. He would physically hurt Harmony as a result. And each time he got angrier and he would hit her repeatedly. She said the injuries were visible. During the time they lived in the car, she said Harmony had black eyes and bruises on her face and her legs. Adam would cover her with a comforter in the car so that people would not see her. He would cover her all the time, anytime. They were somewhere where they could have contact with anybody, no matter who it was. If they were in a parking lot, at the Colonial Apartments, he would cover her up. November 29th, they were in a car accident with somebody named Tabitha riding in the car with them. Tabitha was riding in the passenger seat. She's actually a longtime friend of Kayla's. Adam was driving, and at that point, he did have a license. Kayla did not. He said, ultimately, they were on their way to get drugs when the accident happened. She said she was sitting with Harmony in the back seat on the passenger side. There was a stop sign at an intersection, and the truck that they hit blew the stop sign. Kayla said they had already stopped and were already moving when the truck hit them. Law enforcement was called. They didn't see Harmony because she had black eyes, and Adam had covered her in the back seat. Now, the cop that responded to that accident was on the stand today, and he said the car was very cluttered when he looked in, but he doesn't have any huge memory of looking in the car either. Unfortunately, if they're hiding Harmony in there and the car is full of stuff, it might not have stood out. There's so many what ifs, y'all. This kid was failed on every single level. Moving on to December 7th, 2019, the day Harmony was killed. Kayla said Harmony had an accident first thing that morning. He began the day by screaming at her and hitting her in the head. From there, we know they went to the methadone clinic. Kayla went in first. She was logged in at 7.04 a.m. Adam went in at 7.09 a.m. She goes over what Adam did to Harmony after that second accident. Kayla said she had asked to go to Burger King, so they started the drive after Adam began abusing Harmony. She walks the jury through the route and what happened on the drive with Adam getting angrier and angrier. This is very disturbing. She said she just can't explain the noise that Harmony was making. Kayla talks about putting her arm up to try to stop Adam, but she said he looked at her in an evil way, and she said she couldn't stop him. She said that was the first time she had ever seen him look like that. Now, at the time, their sons were two and a half and 11 months old. She said she didn't look at Harmony after because she was scared. Adam fed the other kids, and then she testified later on, I believe on cross, that they put a croissant in Harmony's lap, and she was already dead. When they got back to the apartments, Harmony was quiet, not making any noise. So they did drugs. She said heroin and crack. She said they did those drugs for about 10 to 15 minutes. When they left, they made it to the next street over. That's when that car died. When the car died, Adam was trying to get a jump. Well, it didn't work. So they get out of the car. Adam started to try to wake Harmony up, and there was no response. According to Kayla, Adam was saying, baby girl. They realized she was deceased. He got the duffel bag out of the trunk. They had put clothes in there when they were evicted. He took the clothes out, and we know where he put Harmony. She said she didn't try to run or get help because she had their boys, and she was scared. She saw Harmony when he put her in that duffel bag. They walked back to the apartments, and once there, she said Adam put the bag in the snowbank so that their friend Anthony wouldn't see it. Anthony gave them his car to stay in that weekend. He also gave them food. The first night, the battery died in Anthony's car. Adam used someone's phone and called someone named Kimberly to help. After that weekend, they went to Kayla's aunt's house. Anthony was the one that took them. Adam had that duffel bag and placed it under the porch. Kayla says that they went there to have her aunt talk to Kayla's mom to see if Kayla's mom would allow Adam and the children and her to come stay. They stayed at her aunt's house a few hours while figuring out where to go. Ultimately, her mom came and picked them up in her van. The bag 
was placed in that van. And when they got to Kayla's mom's house, he put it on the side of the place near the trash. He found a cooler in the hall walkway. Residents use this walkway, by the way, to get in and out of the building. So he put the bag inside the cooler and she remained in there the whole time they stayed with Kayla's mother. Kayla said that she saw that cooler multiple times a day and it stayed in the hallway. I can't believe nobody opened that cooler. And can you imagine if they had? From Kayla's moms, they went to the families in transition shelter. He climbed on the bunk bed, removed the vent, and put the bag in the ceiling of that room they stayed in. She said they slept on a mattress on the floor, and they stayed at that shelter about a month and a half. She said the smell was horrible. It was coming through all the vents. And at one point, maintenance came in due to the smell. Adam took the bag down and put it in the bathroom. He told her the bag was leaking. She said he stayed in the bathroom for a couple of hours. He used trash bags and moved her from that duffel bag into the diaper bag that came from the hospital. She said he used ammonia to clean up. He said that would hide any evidence. Then he placed the bag back in the ceiling. She said at this point, Adam talked about dismembering and using a lime to dispose of the remains. She also talks about where he asked her to bring that bag to his place of work when he was working at Portland Pie. He worked there around two months total. Now get this. She walked the bag from the shelter to his work. The bag was in the stroller. She said the walk was around 10 to 15 minutes and her kids were with her. She said, I had one kid in the front. There's a basket underneath. I put the CMC bag in the back seat underneath and the kid was in the other seat. Adam told her he put the bag in the freezer. She said that was the only time that she took the bag to him. On February 20th of 2020, they moved to the apartment in Manchester from the shelter. They did not list Harmony as a child that was living in that apartment on the paperwork. February or March of 2020, they got tax returns. They did list Harmony on those tax returns. Adam told her to leave Harmony on there so it would show that she was still living with them. You know the reason is for the tax return they probably got for Harmony. Plus, if you remember, this is during COVID. We got those... Uh, relief checks for kids so it benefited them they kept the bag in the refrigerator of their apartment and around this time adam got serious about disposing of her one day he took that bag in the bathroom there was lime in there kayla at one point walked in and saw what he was doing she described what she saw to the jury and it sounds horrific adam told her to help and she did she said she did because she was scared, and the most she said she did was help cut clothes off. She then left to check on the kids. She said she couldn't be in there anymore. However, Adam was in there for hours. He didn't take any breaks. He never left that bathroom. She couldn't hear anything after she left. She said the neighbor always played loud music, and that drowned out a lot of the sound in their apartment. After Adam was finished in the bathroom, he put Harmony's clothes in a trash bag with that duffel bag. She says she doesn't know what he did with the trash bag, but said he planned to take it somewhere to throw it away. He didn't want any evidence left in their trash. From there, he put that bag in the freezer. And later, Adam talked about disposing of Harmony's remains. He said he wanted to do it soon because he was scared if anything happened. He was scared of what would happen to him, her and the kids. At some point, Adam started accusing Kayla of being an informant with the police about Harmony's murder, so he began abusing her. When she would deny it, he would yell at her and just tell her to tell the truth. She said she wasn't. At one point, she finally said she was, even though she wasn't, but she said it didn't matter. He would punch her with a closed fist and an open hand. The abuse became constant. He was also breaking things in the apartment because he thought there were microphones and cameras in the house. They showed a picture of Kayla to the jury where she was beaten. He told Kayla if she ever told anybody about him killing Harmony, he would have his uncle kill her and nobody would be able to find her. Adam got in touch with a friend named Travis Beach. Kayla had not met this guy before. She said he came to the apartment with his girlfriend, Brittany. From there, they all went to an Econo Lodge. Brittany rented the rooms. They all had separate rooms, by the way. And they put that bag in the mini fridge. Kayla learned about the U-Haul that Adam planned to use to dispose of Harmony's remains. He told her Brittany would rent the U-Haul since she had a license and also to have it in someone else's name so they couldn't prove Adam rented it. She said that Adam never told her where he was planning to put Harmony's remains. He said he wouldn't tell her in case the cops asked, 
then she could truly say she didn't know. Adam returned just before the sun came up. He told Kayla he got rid of her. They show photos of Kayla with black eyes that was dated March 17th of 2021. During one incident, Kayla called someone named Roseanne for help. She was the public transportation person who gave rides to the clinic. He would tell Kayla they weren't going, even if the ride showed up. One morning, Kayla decided to get up and go to the clinic anyway while Adam was sleeping. Kayla was getting dropped off, and Rose saw she had a black eye. She asked Rose if she could use her phone, and as Kayla was handing the phone back, Adam came and ripped it out of both of their hands and asked who she was calling. She said he was being very aggressive. Adam would tell her she couldn't leave the house because he thought she was going to tell on him. So one day she ran out of the house with her daughter in her arms while she was feeding her. The other boys were inside. Kayla ran with her daughter in her arms to the apartment next door where a woman named Tara lived. Kayla asked if she could call her mom. At this point, Adam comes out, followed her, put her in a chokehold and said, don't make the call or you will get hurt. The state asked about the photo. They showed the jury of her with the black eyes with Kayla. He asked if that day stood out to her and she said, yes, that's the day she took her kids and left, March 17th of 2021. By the way, they were married on Harmony's birthday, June 7th, 2017. At that point, Harmony would have been three. They are still legally married. At one point, Adam started another relationship with Kelsey Small. Kayla had met her. On December 30th of 2021, Kayla was at the shelter and officers contacted Kayla about Harmony and she stuck to the lie. She said the reason is because Adam told her. After the investigator left, Kayla contacted Adam. Adam told her not to say anything and just to say that she wants a lawyer and do not tell where he was. He was in Maine at the time. She told him to get back to New Hampshire. The same day, officers met with her. She met Adam and Kelsey at Walmart. This was on December 30th of 2021. They went to trade phones for money. They traded hers, Adam's, and she wasn't sure who else. She talks about after being charged, she did agree to provide information to the state and testify against Adam. He has her look at the jury and say she did not kill Harmony, but Adam did. So it's really uh, such a disturbing case. But look, I so many people are divided. Some people say they understand as a victim of domestic violence why she would be terrified. It's just hard for me to think that with the extremes that happened there with Harmony that, you know, I mean, she, at point she's at the shelter alone. She could have went and said, there is a dead kid in the ceiling and he did it and he's abusing me. I'm understand and I'm very sympathetic that she is a victim of domestic violence. It's never pretty, but there was so much cover up and there were opportunities for her to come clean, especially when he's in a different state. On Cross, the defense says, as far as you knew, Adam took Harmony to her mother and you thought Adam was in Maine, but you didn't tell them how to get in touch with Adam, but you got in touch with him and you told him to come back to deal with this too. You said you weren't dealing with this by yourself and it wasn't your fault. And he came back with Kelsey. She says yes. They talk about her leaving on St. Patrick's Day when he hit her. She called the police, went to her mom's, and then went to a shelter. They point out she was very jealous of Adam's new girlfriend, Kelsey. They also ask about Harmony and the fact that before she was murdered, that Kayla or Adam, neither one, cleaned her face up from a prior incident where he hurt her. She said after the incident which caused Harmony her life, she thought Harmony was asleep because Harmony typically would go to sleep after these incidents. The poor child probably was getting concussions on a regular basis. They asked why Kayla didn't leave. And Kayla said because she cared for Adam. And she said she still cares about Adam because he's the father of my children. He was my best friend. It's just been hard for me to let go. She said at one point, Adam said he wanted to self-harm. Kayla told him that their other kids needed him and not to do it. That was it for Kayla's testimony. I wanted to cover that. I'll probably update again in a couple of days on this case. So look out for that. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. We will see you soon. Mm -hmm.